Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. If you're struggling with diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, fibromyalgia, the list goes on. It's amazing. But it's all about choices, lifestyle choices. And the amazing thing about it is if you can lifestyle your way into getting sick, you can lifestyle your way out and truly get well. And that's what I want to empower you to do here on this show. We're going to go now to Doug. Hi, Doug. Thank you. Well, I just, a lot of times it's encouraging to hear other people's successes or report of, uh, reports of things that have done, uh, improved their health, I guess. And uh, my mother had half her pancreas taken out 20 years ago in May. And the other half has been almost nine years now. Wow. And most people, even in the medical community, will tell you that that's not possible. And she's done it with nutrition. When she found out she had a pancreas problem, she started doing research to see what that meant, and it was not a pretty picture. And she chose to go uh, homeopathy or uh, use nutrition, and they told her, well, that hadn't been proven. And she said, well, if I'm going to die anyway, what difference does it make? Right. So she's made 20 years without a pancreas to prove that nutrition is a, uh, something that's worth considering at least. Wow, Doug, that, that really is amazing. So she's gone 20 years. They've completely removed her pancreas? Well, half of it 20 years ago, and the other half of almost nine now. This fall will be nine years. And what did they tell her when they removed the second half of it? Yeah. What did they, what did they tell her? That Well, they like I said, 20 years ago they told her that uh, nutrition has not been proven that she needed to take the drugs they were recommending. And she said, no, I don't want to take your drug. Uh, I want to do anything I can to maintain my health with nutrition. And they said, well, that just hasn't been proven. And she said, well, fine. You know, if I die, I die. But, uh, you know, they didn't offer any hope for her with their protocol. And so she was able to live 11 and a half years with half a pancreas. And what they found out is if you survive what they call the Whipple procedure, sure, um, more than uh, – a couple of years, there's a good chance what's left of your pancreas will develop another tumor. And she went 11 and a half years, and it did develop another tumor, and they had to take the rest of it out, and it will redo. But I just encourage anybody to – it's really frustrating. You want to share with people and say, you know, consider nutrition. Well, my doctor says this, and my doctor says, well, okay, but, uh, you know, they aren't trained in everything. That's right. And – and if you hear of other people's uh, success or whatever, I just want to encourage people to at least consider nutrition, good nutrition, on the road traveling tonight, coming through an area and just heard you for the first time. And I thought, well, I wanted to pass that encouragement on people to take charge of your health. Don't be drinking the high fructose corn syrup and the, you know, all the things that are making us fat and sick and whatever. But take responsibility <laughs> and eat healthy and turn your, turn your life around. No, I think, Doug, that's that's just a great point. I'm glad you called in to share that because so many people sometimes get on the fence and they don't know who to listen to and who to believe. And, and our physicians that we have, I mean, we're all trained a certain way. You do have to do a lot of extra training in natural-based care and making better food choices, better lifestyle choices all the way around. And it's just not taught in medical school. And I know I didn't learn it. And so... The reality is there's a lot of extra training that has to happen. And then once you get into your specialty, you get so focused in that area and there's so many hours in the day and then you get a family, people just don't have time to study the extra to go into more of the natural-based care. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that your mom went that route. And it sounds like she's doing great. That is fantastic to hear that story. And I know that encouraged someone else too. And the body is amazing. It can regenerate, even function very well if you give it the right raw materials to do that. So the answers are out there. And it really comes down to prevention. It comes down to not ever letting your body get to the point where things can break down at that level, too. And that's only learning ahead of time. A lot of people don't learn, and they have to learn during the process, I'm sure, like she did. But she jumped in and said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat this regardless. I'm going to make the best choices I can that I know to do. And then look where she is today. She's thriving in the midst of having Whipple procedures and having her pancreas removed, it's, it's just incredible. That's a great story. And you're right, it is about taking responsibility for your health and for your life and not relying on other people to get wisdom 
from your doctor for those that are trained more than the average person and understanding that, doing your own research and being responsible for your own health and not relying on everybody else to do it. You can get guidance, but at the end of the day, it's going to be up to your choices and what you do every single day that can empower your health and empower your life. And that's just a great story. So tell your mom, we said hi, and we're proud of her. We're big fans of her. I'll tell you, I am already, and I've never met her. So good to talk with you. 888-283-7272. That's 888 Seventy-two, seventy-two. Check us out on the web. There you'll find Facebook and Twitter as well. You can join and stay posted with everything going on within the show and all the growth and the live events that we have coming around the corner. So it's going to be a lot of fun. You want to jump in and stay tuned. Also, our free email newsletter. Let's go now to Robert. Robert, welcome to the show. How you doing, sir? Living well, as always. What's up? Everything is going okay. Well, no, no, everything ain't going okay. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> no, Doc, I'm, I'm, I'm having, I'm having some problems. I, I've been through a lot of stuff. Okay, uh, two years ago, I had a, a brain tumor in my pituitary gland, mm-hmm. and okay, and they went in and took it out. And I've been doing okay since then. You know, I had some problems. You know, along with that, you know, I had blood clotting my lung and um, had all kinds of stuff going on. You know, I had went through a lot of pain, and I went through a lot of stuff. But now that most of that's gone, you know, I'm doing a whole lot better. They put give me medicine, but which I really can't take a lot of medicine because it, you know, don't do don't do me good. And so I don't like taking prescription stuff if I can help it. And I was just wondering, is there anything that I, that I can do to help myself? So you've done without, all the medicine without, without having to take, you know, Viagra and all that stuff. You know, yeah, and Cialis and all that. Yes, yeah, so I don't do well with that. You know, I've what tried your, it, but I don't. I don't do well with it. Slowly, it built itself back up, and um, so I, I assume everything was getting better. But it, it's not getting better. You know, yeah. I, I've been. I went back about uh, two months ago, and you know, he checked me again, and, and he did tests on me, and he said that things look good. And I told him, I said, well, well, there's something wrong. And then they sent me to a specialist in Chapel Hill, and I went up to him, and he did tests on me too. And then he wants to put me on shots, and I don't want to take shots either. Yeah, I got it. I got so, it. you know, I, I don't want to I don't, I don't do a lot of drugs and stuff if I can help it. Does it ever, do you ever get erections? No, sir, I can't really. Well, I can, but it's not uh, a firm one. And not a firm one. And what is your age? Um, I'm 51. 61? Well, 50, I'll be 51 in October. 51, okay. Yes. All right, let's do this. There are there are some options, and I can, I'm can i going to tell you about those and, and some of the physiology behind it, too, about erectile dysfunction and some of the reasons of what causes it what you can do to potentially get out of it without having to take the medication. There are some natural options out there based on research, not just hearsay, and they can be very helpful. So why don't you do this? Hang tight, and we'll go into this commercial break, and we're going to talk more about Ed, erectile dysfunction, something that so many guys are dealing with. You're definitely not the only one, and we'll get into that when we come back. If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete, creatine hydrochloride, is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength conditioning coach at Florida State University. And I've taken it ever since my college years. And it's made a massive difference in my life. Everything in my body, I believe, is functioning better because of creatine. Creatine hydrochloride I've moved over to using concrete. And it is the best form of creatine on the market. Concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on Walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements. Just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance your strength and your recovery and your immune system get boosted today to find out more connect with on call radio online at nchasenetwork.com Lines are open, 888-283-7272. Check us out on the web. Going to the break, talking with Robert. Talking about erectile dysfunction. Now, this is one of those topics that a lot of people, a lot of guys just don't want to talk about. And the reality is that 
there's so many men today that are dealing with it. I mean, it's becoming almost an epidemic in the country. And, you know, you go to see urologists and talk to your primary care physicians as well, and you, you will ask them. And a lot of guys are coming out and dealing with this, guys with prostate issues. Uh, matter of fact, one of the leading complications of a prostate surgery is impotence. And when guys start getting enlarged prostates, called benign prostatic hypertrophy or BPH, when guys start getting that, it becomes a build downhill slope for erections. So here's the deal. Cialis and Viagra and those medications, they're called phosphodiesterase inhibitors. And the phosphodiesterase inhibitors can work very well, but there's some side effects to them that can be not so pleasant and can become a challenge. And, and really, I know, Robert, for you, you don't want to be relying on a pill the rest of your life to make things happen. Am I right? That's true. You know, and it just gets to a point where, you know, there's got to be a way. You're thinking, well, it used to work, <laughs> and now I'm 51, <laughs> and it's not working. So what's the deal? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you were 81, I guess we always want it to work. But there's a difference between being 51 and 81. So, are you married? No. Okay. When did it, let me ask you this. When did it go from working to not? Was it all of a sudden or was it gradual? It, it was gradual, but it was like um, maybe three and a half, four years ago. Were you married then? Yes. Hmm. What happened? I don't know. It just did they divorce it? No, 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 no. Did she... <laughs> Did she pass away? Did she? Did you get a divorce? What? What? Somebody divorce. cheat on each other? What happened? Divorce. Anybody cheat? No. Just couldn't make it work. Yeah. Who said they couldn't make it work and walked away? You or her? Me. Hmm. How long ago was that? About seven years. The reason I'm asking that is, is not to dig too deep in your personal life, but the reason I'm asking that is because erectile dysfunction has two main components. It can be physiological and it can be psychological. Yeah. And there's a strong psychological component. It's usually about 70-30, 70, 70 psychological, 30% physiological. And so usually if there's if there's an issue, just just know that, that, that – Somehow, some way, there is, you know, an issue in that area that's got to be worked on. And I don't, I don't, I'm not a counselor. I don't know what that is. That might be something you want to go talk with a pastor or counselor or someone that you trust, and maybe start digging a little bit in there, a little, somehow, some way. Okay, I'm just letting you know that. I'm gonna give you some what research says can make things work better, but I'm just telling you as a friend that. There is a component, strong component to that. And any doctor that doesn't tell you that, it, they're mistaken or they're not taking the time to tell you that. They're just writing a prescription and moving on. It's, it's big for, for erectile dysfunction. Um, let me tell you a quick example. A lot of guys that work a lot, you know, they can, uh, you'll, you'll see guys that come in in their, in their 40s and 50s uh, in the clinical setting and you send the guy on vacation, like guys that work really hard, like a lot of hours. You send that guy on vacation, I've seen so many times where physicians, friends of mine have done that, and, you know, the guy, it starts working again at, at the end of the vacation because of stress and he's away from, you know, a lot of the life issues that he's facing. So stress plays a big role too. Now, from a natural perspective, several things are important. Number one, have you been diagnosed with anything? Any, any taking medicine for any kind of medical condition? Okay, I, I, I take, um, they got me on hydrocortisone, uh-huh. um, that's, that's the only medicine I take now. What's it for? What are you taking well, it for? Well, when, I, when, I, when she put me on it, I was having a lot of pain in my legs and in my arms, mm-hmm. and, and that's what she put me on, and the pain went away. Did she say you had fibromyalgia? Uh, she, might <laughs> she might have. Okay. So just generalized achy pain, right? Yes. But see, see, like I said, I had, two years ago I had surgery, okay, and they you know, went in and took the, the tumor out. And then mm-hmm. a couple of weeks after that, I developed a blood clot in my lung, and yeah. then they put me on blood thinners, right? And, you know, to get the blood clot to go away, and eventually it did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then I started having a lot of pain while I was going through that, and I used to hurt, you know, 
day and night. It didn't matter. I, I hurt my legs, my legs, my arms. You know, I used to have, have a lot of pain. Yeah. And I, um, then my sur- surgeon sent me to Chapel Hill. And um, I talked to a doctor, Sharpless, and that's, she checked me and went over me and stuff. And then she come back and she told me, she said, okay, I'm going to give you some medicine to take. And she gave me, it's called hydrocortisone. Well, I, that's the, um, the generic name for it. No, it's just, yeah, it's it's just cortisone. It's, it raises cortisol in your body. I got it. Okay. And it lowers that's inflammation. What, that's, what, it, that's what she put me on. And, and then when I started taking that, then the pain went away. You know, and I haven't hurt anymore. But now if I, I, right now I take it every day. But if I miss a dose, I can tell. You know, wow. I start feeling bad. And um, and then she told me that if I start feeling bad, just increase the doses a little bit and I'll get better. But once as long as I take that medicine every morning, I'm fine the rest of the day. All right. I, I probably First, could be I thought maybe, you know, one time I asked you, Rollins, I said, well, could that be a cause? Could that, you know, be affecting me in any way? And he yeah. said he didn't think it would. So, um, well, let me share a couple of things with you. Okay. And this is, and I don't have much time, but here, I could be on the, I could be on this call for, for 30 minutes actually, but I can't. Here's the deal. Uh, lowering inflammation in the body is what's going to help with the whole cortisone deal. Okay. The, the, the hydrocortisone that you're taking. So I'd encourage you to get a copy of my book, Empowering Your Health. Read through that. If you're not a big fan of following a new diet plan, look into it because it could be helpful to you. From erectile dysfunction, NO2 production, nitric oxide was up for a Nobel Prize, the guy that did a research on it, showing that it can help erection and also vas- all kind of vascular ability, even with heart function in the body. Arginine, citrulline are the two amino acids that work together to produce the NO2 in the body. So you want to look up NO2 and the research on that. There are supplements they make for that. Also, tribulus can help with testosterone levels and also luteinizing hormone in the body. can be very helpful. And working out with weights three days a week has proven to raise growth hormone levels, which can help with erections as well. But consistent cardio activity is a big component with all of these. Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Rasa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. Lives and money. We well, you know I'm a big fan of prevention all the way around with medicine and health care, and I think we need to do more of that. But obviously they're saying now with the American Heart Association, they're coming out saying the researchers now with the direct and indirect cost of heart disease topping $450 billion, that's with a B, $450 billion. And ultimately we can't afford not to, which was Dr. Weintraub, who's an MD and chairman of the committee, wrote in an AHA policy statement in a news release. The statement summarizes recent research on the value of heart disease prevention and calls for individuals at the local, state, and federal policymakers to take action as a sound investment in future financial and physical health of our country. And they're saying a couple of things about it, which I think are interesting. They're saying people don't often realize the power to stay healthy is in their own hands. Thank you, Dr. Weintraub. See, I knew everybody would catch on. So it's in the power of our hands. We've got to take responsibility for our health. He said, but it's not something many individuals or families can do alone. It takes fundamental changes from a society as a whole. It takes coaching. It takes a mental decision that you want to get well. It takes a shift in the parents, which will shift into the kids. And I'm telling you right now, if we as a country would jump in, we would change our lifestyle. We would teach our kids how to eat healthy. Then they would teach their kids, which would be your grandkids, and you would literally change a generation. I don't know about you, but I want to be a generation changer. I don't want to sit around and be sick and tired like my family members have been. Who's going to take a stand? Who in your family is going to break that genealogy line and is going to stick your, you know, draw a line in the sand and say enough is enough? Because remember, we have we get sick for three different reasons. Genetics Number one, it's what we were handed down with. Okay, that's a, a small part of it. And you've got nutritional deficiencies, which we do to ourselves by eating the wrong kind of foods over and over again. And then toxicity from the environment, 
from the air that we breathe, the water we drink, the foods that we eat. So there's a toxic environment around us that we can control. And if we teach that to our kids, we create a, a better environment, better lifestyle choices, teach that to our kids, we're going to create healthier generations. And according to this study, we'll lower costs for heart disease. I mean, duh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So the real key is, in all of this, is to focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. That choices, radical choices, radical changes in your life will produce radical results, but you have to be willing to do that. No one else will take responsibility for you but you. No one will. Your doctor won't, friends, family members, coworkers. No one can take responsibility for your health but you. And so you have to be the one to be proactive about your health. And they even said recently in an article that what's the best exercise? People, you know, obviously you've got to eat healthy, but they're saying there's a great exercise for heart health that will help with the prescription. It's aerobic exercise and drop weight off the waistlines, but they're saying the anaerobic exercise in higher intensity is very good as well. So they're saying aerobic plus resistance is the optimal program. Dr. Timothy Church, who studies exercise and disease at LSU, Pennington Biomedical Research Center in Baton Rouge, he said the findings told Reuters in this that it's in line with other research on physical activity. The Duke University Medical Center in Durham, North Carolina, randomly assigned 196 overweight sedentary adults to three different exercise programs, and they each did resistance training three days a week, working out on eight different weight machines, targeting upper and lower body muscles. The second group did two hours of aerobic training in the week on gym machines, the equivalent of about 12 miles of walking and jogging. More than one quarter of the exercisers dropped out of the study during the eight-month exercise. But in the end, the colleagues analyzed the pre-exercise and post-exercise status of these folks. And on average, people in the weight training group who completed the exercise program gained about 1.5 pounds and slimmed their waistline. The aerobic group lost an average of three pounds and half an inch from their waist. But both contributed to better heart prevention outcomes. So exercise does play a role, and I think that the combination of weights and cardio together, the aerobic and the anaerobic together, is your best bet. It really is in all the research, but you don't have to go for a long period of time. People think you have to go for an hour, two hours every day. It's not. If you could spend 30 minutes, you could do 20 minutes. Now, that's, that is, when I say high intensity, it means that you don't rest a lot in between sets. It means that you might and do a set of bench press, and then you rest 30 seconds, and then you're doing your next set of bench press. So by the time you're done, you are sweating like a wild man or wild woman, and then you do your cardio at the very end. So 20 minutes of weight, you could do 10 minutes of high-intensity cardio, like an elliptical, or put the incline way up on the the treadmill, and you can just walk that in, on an incline of like 10.0, 11.0. So whatever you've got to do to keep the intensity up, that type of exercise is what's going to produce the best benefit. It's going to give you lean muscle tissue. It's going to protect your joints, make them stronger, make the bones strong, increase bone density, and it's going to increase your heart health. So it's a win-win. And if you do that, even just minimum three days a week of that versus no days a week of that is going to make a huge difference in your overall health. So think about that. Powerful. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Let's go to Bill now. Hi, Bill. Hi, how you doing? Living well. What's up, partner? Uh, well, let's see if we can make this a little bit of fun and a little bit of uh, serious. Uh, let's do it. I got I got stuck with listening to you because I always, for 15 years, been listening to George Norrie and Art Bell. <laughs> and the only thing I can get in southeast Missouri was you guys and WLAC. <laughs> That's great, though. <laughs> and then... Then I started paying attention, and I thought, you know, that guy really knows what the hell he's talking about. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what I said. We're going to try to make this a little bit of fun, but serious. Uh, I'm 72 years old. All right. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've retired four times, quit doing that, back in the television production business for Tea Party. I own a big recording studio doing mm-hmm. all kinds of music. In fact, my, a lot of times people come over here from your place. And I know wow. pretty okay. much everybody that's in your place. 
<laughs> I was on the I was on the road for about twenty five years and worked with everybody, just about everybody there is, you know, the old ones. Right. Uh, but uh, my body is uh, unbelievably resilient. It just does not quit, even at seventy two years old. I mean, I can you know I can start bleeding and it'll quit in about five minutes. I have had a prostate problem for about 20 years. I thought I was going to die last week, but it turned out my heart was fine. And what I had was pneumonia. And then they gave me, let me see what the hell it is, amoxicillin. Okay. And But I've been taking Flomax for years, and that works. It seems to work. I also take a couple of pills a day of, uh, well, it's uh, salt palmetto. But what my real problem is, I wake up in the middle of the night and I've got cramps in my legs. And somebody said it's calcium, so I started taking calcium. Okay. Did it help? I'm taking calcium 600 plus vitamin D or something. I don't know whether that's going to work or not. Well, I mean, have you since you've been taking it? it has it? Have you noticed the difference? Now you only get cramping at night when you're sleeping. Is that right? Yeah, and I, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll, I'll stretch my legs out and oh my god, <laughs> you know, oh everything starts cramping up and I got to get out of bed and walk around for five minutes. Right. And that you know that stops the cramps. Um. Well, where where do I go here? Uh, is there anything better than this Flomax? Because my yeah. doctor seems to think, you know, I should stay away from pro- all these prostate things that are advertised on the radio. Mm, no, I, I disagree with that. I mean, here's the deal. Let's First, let's talk about the, the cramping. All right. The cramping is a mineral. It might be calcium, but it could be magnesium and it could be potassium. So the reality is you don't really know what minerals because a lot of times the minerals won't show up on a blood test as far as you being really low. And when you start getting the cramping and all that, it, it could be just low enough to be causing that at night. And you use up a lot of your minerals during the day and they can be burned up and then you're not getting them nutritionally from your foods and it can cause the cramping at night. So a good rule of thumb is to do some form of green vegetables, at least a good serving of them, at least two meals a day. And then if you want to do some kind of supplement with that, two things. First, got to look at vitamin D because vitamin D is kind of like the, the coordinator of all the minerals in the body. If vitamin D is low, really uh, the minerals aren't going to be, be able to be as utilized as they normally would be. So vitamin D, get a blood test, and the numbers on your vitamin D test should be between 70 and 90 on that blood test. If not, then you'll probably want to talk to your physician about supplementing with vitamin D, and he'll give you the catch-up with all the different, you know, the, the different minerals, from potassium, uh, calcium, magnesium, and it'll have all the trace minerals in there like iodine and chromium and a lot of the other little elements and minerals that are in there. So that can be helpful. And you always want, you can take those, you know, the bottles will tell you when to take it and all that, and you talk to your health food store people about all that. But do some research on brands and all that kind of thing and, and see what works best for you. I'm sure you'll find what you need to. But, yeah, I mean, that's usually the key, and vitamin D is kind of the regulator. Now, when it comes to the prostate itself, I I disagree with your physician only because there's a lot of nutrition is the key for any organ system. So unless you're building it up nutritionally, you're not helping the situation. And there's some really good products out there. First, an avocado a day is really good, been proven for prostate health. It contains beta cytosterol, which is really good. Pumpkin seed oil has been some good research. Zinc as a mineral and also salt palmetto. They all have really good research, so I'll continue looking into that. I wouldn't throw that out with the bathwater yet. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, 
It's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Check us out on the web. Scripture for the day, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. It says, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift from God. So powerful and so true. Kids get extra calories, they're saying now, from foods outside the home. So even though parents may be trying to make a better environment in the home, they're getting it more on the outside. The U.S. children are eating more, and the extra calories often come from foods eaten while they are away from home, whether it's at friends or school or whatever. So overall, children eat about 180 to 200 calories more a day than children did decades ago, according to a study by Jennifer Pott, a doctoral student at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. We found that kids eat a relatively constant level of calories at home. But in addition to that, kids are eating an increasing number of calories outside the home. Fast food, including food taken home to eat, store-bought prepared foods, are also fueling the rise in calories, she says. And the findings may help parents raise their children and reduce excess calories. The childhood obesity epidemic now its tripled in the last 30 years, according to the CDC, is something that we all need to be concerned about. And I think that as parents, you know, having some kind of oversight of what your kids are doing, even outside the home, or laying principles in them and teaching them how, you know, even though the food may be available, doesn't mean they need to eat it and what it can do to them long term, especially in obesity. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we're finding today with the obesity issue with our kids is that parents are obese. And so it's kind of hard if you're a fat parent to tell your kid, hey, don't do this because you'll get fat, because you're kind of leading by example when you're about 100 pounds overweight and you're, you know, obviously you're trying to teach your kid not to. It's not going to work. Kids don't do what we say, they do what we do. So you might want to think about that a little bit. I think that's one of the biggest challenges we're facing in America right now. It's it's challenging, but it can change. But again, nothing change, nothing changes until we change. And when we change, that's when everything changes. And life can go to another level for the better. 888-283-7272. Don't forget Facebook and Twitter. If you're not involved, we'd love to invite you. You can like us. You can follow us, whatever whatever you want to do. You can go to Facebook and Twitter, both. Let's go to Phyllis now. Hi, Phyllis. I'm an entrepreneur who is undergoing severe overwhelm right now because I wear several different hats, and as you know, entrepreneurs don't work an eight-hour day. We work 10, 12, sometimes 18 hours a day. I am normally very healthy. I have known, I'm a little bit older, but I have known for many, many years that you know what you put into your body dictates your lifestyle, and I've always done my best to lead a very healthy lifestyle. I exercise regularly, I practice yoga, I do not eat processed foods, you know, I I do the whole nine yards health-wise, but Mm -hmm. I am experiencing some overwhelm right now. Normally, exercise, yoga, kava, and St. John's wort are perfect antidotes to overwhelm. You know, in addition to socialization and just talking with friends. But for some reason, the overwhelm is just really beginning to get the best of me. Hmm. Well, if you feel overwhelmed, first things first, I mean, you've got a lot going on, right? And life just can throw curveballs at you. And sometimes life just is life, and it can be a struggle, and it can be a challenge. But at the end of the day... You've got to look at brain chemistry. You've got to look at stress management. You have to look at what are you doing 
to make a change. And even though life is throwing you some issues that you're having a hard time dealing with, that I would look at brain chemistry first. And a couple things. Acetylcholine is one of the main brain chemicals, but also GABA. And GABA is gamma amino butyric acid. And it's one of the neurotransmitters that really when we change and we can build those neurotransmitters up, then our body can begin to chill out and handle stress and life a little bit better. And so understanding that is always always a key. So let me share some nutritional items that could be very helpful that you might want to look up, all right, and do some research on. But for acetylcholine, there's certain foods that you can include in your diet that they've shown that can help the brain chemistry of acetylcholine. That's eggs, beef, nuts, cheese, and yogurt. Those foods have been shown to help with acetylcholine levels. And then also, there are certain supplements that can help too. Now, vitamin B5 is always a gold standard for brain chemistry as well as B6. But for acetylcholine, phosphatidylcholine, which is called lecithin, and it's actually found in egg yolks. That's why the eggs were so beneficial in the foods that they listed that can help with acetylcholine levels. Now, GABA is another one, and that's the big one for anxiety. So when GABA levels are low, anxiety is high. That's why we give drugs in, people give drugs, docs give drugs in medicine called benzodiazepines, and the benzos, and you give something like a Xanax, and it, it, what it does is somebody has a lot of anxiety, well, it raises the GABA levels. So it raises GABA and causes a person to chill out. So it's interesting how that whole deal works. And it's pretty powerful, too, at the same time. So in the middle of that, I would encourage you, obviously, you're managing your lifestyle choices. Eat healthy, exercise, you do what you do. But it comes down to brain chemistry. It's kind of like weight loss. Weight loss, at the end of the day, when you get down to those last 15 to 20 pounds, it really comes down to the hormones. And balancing hormones is a real big key, whether it's thyroid, estrogen, progesterone, whatever. So for stress and stress management, usually it comes from brain chemistry, GABA, acetylcholine, are the two you're probably looking at. Puts another hour in the chart, so I'd like to thank our producer, John Garrison, Leslie Pardue, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on this show, and together we can change the health of our friends, our families, and our community. Diagnosing hope one person at a time, whether you're absolutely thriving or a child's in a hospital bed. Remember, there's always hope to get your health back. Listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over. But check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.